Today, we're going to be flipping low-income housing to rent out with almost no money into the deal. Steve from New York, let's dive in. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS, and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Hey, folks, welcome to another episode of the MLS Search and Analysis Show here on Holton Wise TV. I'm your host, James Wise, and folks, this is the show where we work together mano a mano. You get me and my team, we work together personally, right? We are here to help you guys uh, build, grow, start your real estate portfolios, right? You go to holdmice.com, purchase a package. Um, you could also click the show notes below to purchase a package. After you make your purchase, you could do like one or we sell them in three, four, and ten packs, right? I reach out to you, I send you an email, and I try to get all the information I can about you. Wants, needs, goals, what you're trying to do, who you are, just so I can understand where you're at, what you have to work with, what you're trying to accomplish. And then I put together a series of videos uh, where I go out, I find you a property, we talk about it, I teach you about the market, and I give you my action plan for the property, and you let me know if you want to move forward. And if not, you let me know where I went astray, why you don't want to move forward, and we move on to the next deal, right? That's how we do it. And I'm working with a dude named Steve, right? Steve, my man Steve is a police officer out there in New York City. Thank you for your service, Steve. You ain't going to hear any of that anti-cop fucking bullshit rhetoric here. We got no fucking pussies like that on my show. We fucking support law enforcement here. So good job out of you, Steve. Blue-collar guy, hard-working guy, right? Uh, you have $60,000 in cash, and you're hoping to utilize the burst strategy, right? So that's what I'm talking about, right? We're going to be flipping properties to rent, right? Uh, you could with the burst strategy, guys. First of all, if you don't know what the burst strategy is, right? You buy a, a beat-up property. You go ahead, you renovate it, and then instead of flipping it to sell it, right? Instead of buying it, renovating it, and selling it, what you do is you put a tenant in it and you rent it out, right? That's the other R, and then you refinance it, right, with the bank. And uh, the idea is for the acquisition costs and the repairs to be less than that after repair value, less than the new appraised price, right? So you're you're flipping houses, but you're not exactly selling them, right? You're flipping them to keep them. And doing that allows you to get into deals uh, with almost no money down, very small amount of money down, right? When you do a normal deal, uh, you have to put down approximately 25% when it's a rental property. So anything under that 25% down payment should be considered a big win. And the property that I got for you, Steve, I think is going to be a huge win. It just hit the market today, all right? 3217 West 52nd, Cleveland 44102, listed at 34900 It's a It's a beat-up little house. Let's see what the listing agent, some cats out of Jam Real Estate. Investor Special, bring your tools and bring this home back to life. Great opportunity for value add. This home is a large 1,600 square foot with much potential for owner, occupant, or investor looking to flip a rent. Contact for more details, okay? Now, you could definitely get a ton of rent out of this bad boy, but we, of course, got to fix it up, right? It's just uh, she's a beat-up dog, right? It looks like the previous owner was uh, an investor. They went with, like, a similar type of reno that you'd see here at Holton Wise, right? Gray walls, white trim, decent-looking floor, but obviously this tenant uh, beat this thing to holy hell. Now, the cool thing is you don't need to replace these cabinets, right? Definitely work with that, but we're definitely going to need to go through and repaint the whole thing. Uh, spruce it up, right? Like these floors, you know, we need to do some work to them floors. You got to refinish them, recode them, things of that nature. It looks like these folks went the super cheap route and they probably just painted them. You see some low income uh, landlords painting floors instead of refinishing them because it's cheaper, but uh, ultimately it's going to attract a lower quality tenant. So you want to try to avoid that. Going to have to reglaze this tub. That's not going to fly. You got some issues here. You got to take care of that. So get that whole thing reglazed. Uh, don't know if the fixtures still work. You know, tenants sometimes break uh, break the toilets, but what I'm seeing, that's the look you want to have. So you just need to, you know, patch the stuff, clean it. Here's your little laundry area. Tenants will supply their own. Uh, definitely got to, you know, get this looking like the rest of the house. 
Bada bing, bada boom. They didn't give us, you got some broken windows here too, by the way. Some broken windows, obviously minimal amount of landscape it needs to happen. Uh, and they didn't give us much information on the mechanicals of the house, right? So the budget I've got for you. First of all, it's listed at 34.9. I'm hoping we could come in and pick it up at 30k, right? 30k cash. Pick it up at 30k, and then my renovation budget is going to be 30k as well, right? It's going to talk about all the cosmetic stuff I just talked about. In addition, I got about $10,000 towards big ticket items, right? Going in and repainting, pat patching the holes, making that house look cosmetically good. It's going to be about 20 Gs, right? All the stuff I just mentioned. I have an extra $10,000 budgeted for us to deal with some big ticket items, right? I don't have any information. They didn't really give us any information. They're just like, yo, here's our property. It's cheap. Buy it, right? So our big costs, furnaces, 3K, hot water tank, 1K, right? That's $4,000, probably maybe a $6,000 roof, okay? That would be all three of those. I don't know if we need to do all three of those. We probably don't. Uh, from the pictures, the roof didn't look too bad, but in addition to that, it's very possible uh, that there's issues. Maybe some of the piping got stolen in the basement. It looks like it's pretty ragged, pretty run down, right? So I'm anticipating approximately $10,000 between uh, what uh, of those three things we need to do or possibly do some plumbing work, a couple grand on that as well, get some new pipes in there, right? Go PEX pipes instead of, uh, you know, PVC. PVC is just kind of crappy, and uh, you want to go PEX uh, instead of PVC. You want to go PEX instead of copper. Copper gets stolen by crackheads, things of that nature, right? So I, I think uh, what I'm looking at, about $30,000 budget is where we should be at. Now, that's just uh, from what I'm looking at right now. We, we want to, of course, make this contingent on a third-party home inspection. We do that uh, and say the inspector's like, yo, you got major foundation issues. Well, that's going to blow the budget, uh, so we'd have to exit out of the deal at that point, or maybe the inspector finds some other things I'm not thinking about. We could possibly go back and renegotiate with the sellers. But if it all works out how I think it should, 60 k all right? I've renovated freaking hundreds of houses like this, so I think that $30,000 rental budget is going to come in pretty close to where we need to be, right? So. We do that, what we'll get, we'll get a Section 8 tenant paying us a thousand bucks a month or twelve thousand a year. Of that thousand, approximately four thirty goes out the door in costs, leaving us with an NOI of five seventy or sixty eight forty a year. Now notice, even though I'm thinking we're gonna be replacing furnaces, hot water tanks, and roofs, I still have six hundred dollars calculated towards your yearly capital expenditures, right? What that is, that's saving up for the next roof, the next hot water tank, the next furnace, right? Roofs and hot water tanks, or I'm sorry, roofs and furnaces, they last about 30 years. Hot water tanks, they last 15. But don't think just because you replace them now, you don't have to calculate for them going down again because they're eventually going to need to be replaced, right? So you're actually going to be making an extra 600 a year on top of the NOI I've given you, but... I, I've calculated that in there. I don't want you to think it's your return because eventually you'll have to pay for those items. And then I did the same thing with your vacancy. You're not paying a rent, right? Eventually tenants stop paying rent. This is a lower income neighborhood. We're going to try to alleviate all the risks by going with the Section 8 program, right? The biggest risk of low income neighborhoods is people lose their ability to pay rent. They don't pay your rent. You got a victim. House goes empty. Thieves break into the house. Fuck the house up. Things of that nature, right? So Section 8, uh, should keep people in the homes longer. It's going to make your rental income consistent because it's guaranteed by the uh, the government. Now, here's the thing with these low-income neighborhoods. If you're thinking, I don't know, man, maybe I'd like to be in a little bit nicer neighborhood. That's cool. I could appreciate that. But if that's the case, Steve, we're going to have to adjust your plan a little bit, right? Because what you said, you want to do either multifamily, small multifamily, like duplexes, triplexes, quads, or single families. But you only have $60,000 in cash to work with. If we want to get into nicer neighborhoods, I can absolutely get you into nicer neighborhoods uh, doing, you know, one to four unit properties. Well, more like duplexes. Duplex is probably the biggest. But it's not going to be bird deals, right? Because you're going to need a lot more cash, right? If you're trying to, like, do bird deals in these nicer neighborhoods, you need to be, like, well over $100,000. So this would be the type of neighborhood you're going to be stuck with uh, if you want to do the bird deals because you just need to have enough money to buy the property cash because you're not going to be able to get a loan when you buy it because it's going to be all fucked up. And then, of course, you're going to need to finance or fund, rather, the renovations, right? So we could pull all the money back out when it's done. But right here, this is the neighborhood you're going to be in trying to do burrs with a cap of 60 k uh, In addition, you're going to be pretty much limited to single families, dude. Very rare are we going to be able to find a duplex cheap enough 
uh, to acquire and then renovate uh, to keep you under that 60k cap. So keep that in mind. If you if you're down with this, great. I like this neighborhood. First of all, I love Section 8 because I think it really alleviates the risks, and I really like this neighborhood because it's close to Metro Health, and they're investing a billion dollars. Right? You invest a billion dollars in a low-income neighborhood, I think things are going to go up, right? It's in close proximity to other neighborhoods that have gone up, seen that great appreciation, right? If you're thinking about, like, you know, hearing about the resurgence of Cleveland, people are talking about Detroit Shoreway, Gordon Square, Edgewater, Tremont, Ohio City, right? Those are the neighborhoods people are talking about. This is bordering all those neighborhoods and Metro Health injecting a billion dollars into their campus and into the surrounding neighborhoods. All that stuff, I got links down below, like the project, what they're doing. You could Google it. It's in a lot of the newspapers, right? So if you're going to bet on a low-income neighborhood, this is the one I'm going to bet on, right? So keep all that in mind, right? Because you don't have to do this deal, uh, but based on the budget, this is the type of deal we're doing. If that don't work, we're going to, you know, we could move on to different neighborhoods, but again, we got to look at it differently. Instead, maybe we should look at duplexes where you could just buy them up front with a loan, right? Maybe you just buy a $100,000 duplex and you only have to put down twenty five k With your $60,000, I can get you into two of those, right? And you'll have about ten k left over for, you know, for issues right? Things that are going to eventually pop up. So keep all that in mind. But if you got the appetite for this deal, brother, we'd be all into this sucker for 60. We're bringing in the NOI of 6840. We should be able to get it to appraise for $75,000, meaning the bank will loan us back 56250 So you started with sixty k. We spent all of it on this deal, but then you get back fifty six two fifty of it, meaning you're under $5,000 into this deal, right? You're nowhere near 25% into the deal, right? If you tried to buy a property for seventy five k just with a normal loan, 25% down, you're looking at 18750 Well, doing the Burr strategy, that allows you to only have 4750 in the deal, which saves $14,000 for you, right? So you'd start with your sixty k, you end up with a cash flowing property, which after your loan is paying you almost $4,000 a year, and you still have, what do you have left? You have like uh, a little over 55000 left. That's how you could take that sixty k and really stack up a lot of deals. I just needed to make sure you were aware of the type of asset you're getting. So if that makes sense for you, brother, you want to do the deal, Reply all to this private email and my team. We will write up the contract. We'll start negotiating with that seller. We're coming in with a pretty strong offer because I think there's going to be a lot of investors interested in this, right? A lot of investors are looking at this neighborhood. A lot of investors are looking for fixer-uppers. So $30,000, I think, is a pretty strong offer. We may be dealing with other bidders, so you may have to come up with a couple bucks. That, of course, will exceed your $60,000 uh, budget because I don't see a scenario where the rehab comes in under thirty k. but I'm sure you might have a few grand sitting around the home or, you know, I'm sure you'll be able to work that out. If not, that's great. Let me know your feedback. Let, let me know your feedback on the feedback I gave you about possibly going into duplexes in other neighborhoods and just, you know, let me know what direction you want to take this, man. We're going to be doing a lot more videos together we're going to be lurking together for a long term here to build to build you the right real estate portfolio make sure i match you with the right property at the right price with the right financing okay so that's where we're at thanks for sticking around everybody else again if you want to work with me in the same way steve did uh go ahead and go to holdenwise.com click the mls search analysis show order a package like you're watching this video right now don't think you can go in and buy this i send it to him privately he probably got it a couple months ago and then only after the deals are done do i release them publicly on holton wise tv for the rest of you guys to learn for free but if you want to get in the game real time and work with me you gotta buy the packages like steve did that's it folks thank you for watching new viewers do yourself a solid smash that subscribe button because holton wise tv is real estate investing made easy Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.